Welcome to In God's Flow with PM Blossom. A series on self, S-E-L-F. The definition of self is a person's uh, essential being that, that separates him one from, separates one person from another. Translation, the way you do the things you do, that's self. Uh, on last week I told you that the first century church is the same as the 21st century church in this aspect that the first century church were under the Roman Empire rule and the Roman Empire rule was the dominant culture. It was not only the dominant culture, it was the dominant race, the dominant gender, had the dominant finances, the dominant education. And so the Roman Empire church uh, was the dominant culture in the first century and it likened unto America right now and America and all the other countries in the world, they are dominant cultures. When we're talking about dominant cultures, we're talking about the, the we're talking about dominance in culture, dominance in gender, dominance in race, dominance in your political party, your financial status, dominance in education. So when you're looking at the first century church, you're looking at the Roman Empire that ruled basically all of the world, and they were the dominant culture. All roads led to Rome. Say it with me. All roads led lead to Rome. Now, let me say something to you. In a dominant culture, you will always have the have and the have nots. You will always have the poor and the rich. You will always have those that live well and those that don't live well. Because in a dominant culture, let me say something. I know people are, are marching and they're picketing and they're saying we got to do this and we got to do this so we can have equal footing in the earth realm. You will never have equal footing in the earth realm because there will always be a dominant culture, a dominant race, a dominant gender, a dominant political party, a dominant this and a dominant that. The only way that you will have uh, uh, equal footing is when Jesus comes back to live on the earth for the first thousand years. That is the only way. From the beginning of time until now, you will always have the have and the have nots, the rich and the poor, those that live well, those that don't live well. So a lot of times we're stressing over things that cannot be changed. And the only way it can be changed is by means of the word of God. Can, does that make sense? By means of the word of God. Write this down. Not a race or a culture will ever be equal, never. You will never have a dominant culture in the earth realm that will make everything equal for everyone. And you can, you, can trust, you, can, you can trace this from the beginning of time into now. And let me say something, when we're talking about uh, uh, black people in slavery, you not only had black people in slavery, you had white folk in slavery. You had Jewish people in slavery. You had, you had, you had Polish people in slavery. You had Italian, every race on the face of the earth at one time or another was under a dominant culture. Somebody say dominant culture. So, so when we're talking about a dominant culture, whether it is the first century or the 21st century which we now live in, we're talking about this. There will always be, and I need you to get this in your head because I'm going somewhere with this, there will always be a dominant culture. Let me say something. Everyone born in the Roman Empire were under the rule and the citizenship of the Roman Empire. What does that mean? They were Roman citizens, whether they were Greek, whether they were Jews, whatever nationality they were, they were always Roman. Listen, Roman citizens. Remember when they arrested Paul? And they had to go and let Paul out of jail. And he said, why are you letting me out of jail? He, they, and they, they answered Paul and said, because you are a Roman citizen and we are not allowed to arrest you in the fashion that we have arrested you in. But 
even though everyone born under the Roman Empire is a, what you call a Roman citizen, they have equal rights as a citizen. You had all type of races and all type of cultures that they did not treat as equal. They were, well, how would you put it? They were, they were deemed as second class citizens. Somebody say second class citizens. They were not treated fairly. They were not treated fairly economically. They were not treated fairly educationally. They were not treated fairly in any spectrum of, of, of their life because even though they were under the Roman rule, they were not considered Roman citizens as such. They were Roman citizens as the law, but they were not Roman citizens considered by the dominant culture. Let me explain what I mean. The law says if you were born in Rome, under Rome, that you were treated fairly and you were a, a Roman citizen. But the dominant culture, which was the Roman Empire, says, yes, you are a Roman citizen, but we're going to treat you as a second class citizen because we are the dominant culture and we do not recognize you as a citizen equal to us. This is going on from the beginning of the time until now. All dominant cultures react the same. America is a dominant culture. Iran, Iraq is a dominant culture. Ireland is a Ireland is not a dominant culture, but it was under the dominion of England, which was a dominant culture. Why am I saying this? History repeats itself. Dominant cultures come and go. Dominant races come and go. Dominant genders come and go. Dominant societies come and go. But guess what? The gospel remains the same. Did you hear what I said? So I need you to begin to stop thinking about who did this to you, what, sit, what, what culture did this to you, and how badly you were treated. Let me say something. The Bible says one thing. Great is he that's in you than he that is in the world. What does that mean? That means the Jesus Christ that lives in you takes dominance and authority over any dominant culture, dominant race, or dominant uh, gender that will try and take what? Authority over you. So when you become under a dominant culture, it is not so much that they have so much power and so much money and so much authority. If you are in the kingdom of God and you have taken, you have been taken captive by the dominant culture, it simply means that you have not did what you were supposed to do in the kingdom of God that you are acquainted with. Does that make sense? The scripture says, great is he that's in you than he that is in the world. What does that mean? Great is he that's in you than the dominant culture that you are under. Clap your hands for the Holy Ghost. So let's get back to Rome. Rome in the first century, and you can write this down, was much like America in the 21st century. Now, let me say something to you. And, 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 we, and we, I told you uh, last year and the year before, my assignment is to remove the second class citizen, whoever, white, black, Mexican, whatever, from being under the dominance of a dominant culture. And l let me say something to you. When, when I say dominant culture, I mean just what I said. Whoever is in dominance and in control at that time. But you must begin to understand, greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. So if the greater one lives in you, then who is the dominant culture? Who is the dominant kingdom? Who is the ruler in the earth realm? The Bible says, our father who art in heaven, how will be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I submit to you this afternoon that you are looking at the wrong dominant culture, the wrong dominant kingdom. You yourself are the dominant king. Did you hear what I said? You yourself are the dominant 
You yourself have the dominance in the earth realm. Greater is he that is in you than is he that is in the world. And when the believer begins to do that, instead of walking in church, walking in tradition, walking in doctrine, walking in whatever they are walking in, and begin to align themselves with the word of God, obeying the word of God, applying the word of God, then the dominance of you, the dominance of your kingdom, will begin to move out of you and take its place in the world. Clap your hands for the Holy Ghost. I learned a long time ago that it, does, it doesn't make a difference what rule, okay, what law, what someone has said to me to stop me. I learned a long time ago that the word of God overranks and overrules and takes precedence and authority over everything in the earth realm. Great is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Let's see. The, the gospel obeyed and applied by you will allow you to become what God wants you to become, to do what God wants you to do, and to have what God wants you to have. Now, if you don't have that, and if you have not done that, and you have not become that, it is not because of a dominant culture. It is not because of a dominant race. It is not because of a dominant kingdom. It is because you have not used the word of God, apply and obey to move you out of less and move you into more. Does that make sense? And see, a lot of times we are complaining about things that we have brought on ourselves because we have not been obedient. We have not applied the word of God to our lives. We have not become the word wrapped up in flesh. And so therefore, the dominant culture looks at you, which should be the dominant culture, should be the dominant race. And they feel you are nothing because there's no application. There's no usage. Okay, there's no dominion. It's just church as usual. It's just doctrine as usual. It's just let's just do enough to get by. Let's just do enough to get our bills paid. Let's just do enough to get a house and a car and so we can blend in with everyone else in the earth. Now, God did not call you to blend in. God called you to take over, rule, and reign. Let me say it again. You didn't get it. God did not call you to blend in. God called you to rule and reign in the earth realm. Our Father who art in heaven, how will be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will, wait a minute, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. My question to you today is, if the word of God wills you to be the dominant culture, if the word of God wills you to be the power and the authority on earth, if the word of God wills you to be wealthy and healthy, why are you not that? Did you hear what I said? So now, the assignment of Jesus when he walked the earth was simple. His assignment was, and his word to the second class citizen, his word to those that were downtrodden and underprivileged and living, the, living opposite of the Roman Empire was, listen, you are the dominant culture. His, listen, his word was, don't worry about not having Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all of the other things will be at his message in that first century was simply the message today. The message has not changed. His message then is the same now. Don't worry about the dominant culture. Great is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Don't worry about having, not having, having, not having. Don't worry about sick and underprivileged. Great is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Don't worry about the things that are happening to you. Take the word of God and overcome what is in your face. Great is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Let me ask you something. If the kingdom of God were not as powerful as, as, as he, he, she is now, listen, do you really think that black slavery would have ended? 
No, 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 no. It's a dominant kingdom that comes over a dominant culture. Somebody has to dominate in order to free, so to speak, the second class citizen. My next question is why are you living as a second class citizen when you are a citizen of the dominant culture, which is the kingdom of God? Clap your hands for the Holy Ghost. Dominant culture. Your ability to trust and follow God will lead you into realms and positions and levels that you know not of. Can I say something? You need to stop doing church. Hello? And I've been preaching this for years. This is not my first rodeo. You need to stop doing church and start doing the culture, the culture that you are in. You are in the kingdom of God. You are the sons and the daughters of God. Hear me? You are the believers of the kingdom. And so the scripture says, because you are the believers of the kingdom, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. What does that mean? There is nothing on the face of the earth that is greater than the kingdom that you have joined yourself to. It shouldn't take you years to get, get off of that habit. It shouldn't take you years, my God. You got lust and passion and desires and appetites and addictions, my God. It's been trailing you for years. You can't get free. That's because you're living, still living under the dominant culture of this world. You were born into the dominant culture of this world. Greater is he that is in you than a he that is in the world. Clap your hands for the Holy Ghost. The, the, the gospel makes the impossible possible. And, and the gospel allows you to do, to become, and to have what God says for you to do, become, and have. And you read it on a daily basis when you read your Bible, but you just don't apply it to you. Hello? You, you, read, you read that God has healed you. You read that God has made you rich. You read that you are the dominant culture. You read greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You read that with the finger of God, you can cast out the devils, but you never apply it. And so whatever you don't apply, that means that you, re, you, you, you surrender yourself not to the kingdom of God, but you surrender yourself to the culture, the dominant culture that you were born in. This, this got I need, I, need I need you to get this. You surrender yourself to the culture that you were born in. This is just like when I, thank you, Holy Ghost, when I say surrender, you know, somebody goes to trial, and, and usually if you are born a part of a dominant culture, and, and you understand this, uh, you go to trial, you do something wrong, but because you are part of the dominant culture, you don't go to jail right away. Am I right? They done set the trial for Mr. Trump in May. Had it been you, you'd have been in jail serving time by now. Hello? But the dominant culture has rules and regulations and rights that the underlying culture does not have. Translation that the second class citizen does not have. Bam, you're guilty. We sentenced you to 10 years in prison. When do I serve? Oh, you can come back next year. <laughs> Am I right? Why? Because that is the dominant culture. To every dominant culture, you have rules and regulations, you have perks and favors that go along with the culture. So it is with the kingdom of God. You are in the kingdom of God. You got perks and rules and regulations and levels and promotion. God just throw you out a blessing. You got the favor of God. Sometimes God just bless you, my God, and you don't even deserve it. You walking around acting like you deserve what God gave you. You know you ain't nothing. You don't deserve that. It's the mercy of God because you are in a dominant culture. And I'm staying on this because I want you to understand how that culture works. The gospel of those of you that are in the dominant culture, the kingdom of God, when you obey the gospel, 
heard, obeyed, applied. Listen, and you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior. You move into the kingdom of God. You move into the dominant culture that's over every dominant culture in the earth realm. Don't you understand that the heavens, the kingdom of God is greater and has more dominance than any culture on the face of the earth. Did you hear what I said? So what does that mean? That means that when you become a part of the dominant culture in heaven, the heaven, the dominant culture that you have become a part of by accepting Jesus Christ as your personal savior, that's not all you do. I am so sick of people just coming to church and just saying, I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal savior. You just live the same way. Hello, you do the same thing. That, that's not being a part of the kingdom. All right. But the dominant culture, those of you that accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior and you obey the word of God, you apply the word of God, you have faith in the word of God. That dominant culture that you are in has has dominance over the whole earth realm. Greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. That means there's no other culture, no other kingdom on the face of the earth greater than the kingdom that you are a part of. And if that is so, why are you so down and out? Hmm. Did you hear what I said? Why are you so down and out? Why are you so sick? Why are you so dysfunctional? Why are you so addictive? And stay tight. Jesus is Lord. Yes, he is. Who is he Lord over? He's supposed to be Lord over the sons and daughters of God in the heavenly dominant culture. Does that make sense? But if you don't obey the gospel, that is the rule book, the law book from the dominant culture, then the rule book and the law book X's you out and you will never receive what God has said about you. And he has said a whole lot. So when Jesus walked the earth, think about this. The Jews were the second class citizens. The Greeks were somewhat the second class citizens. The Samaritans and, and all of the other races, they were under Roman rule. They were considered Roman citizens, but they were not treated as Roman citizens. They were treated as second class citizens. So are you. Did you hear what I said? And that hurt, that, didn't it? Did that hurt, didn't it? Huh? The same Jesus that came with the gospel in the first century is the same Jesus that has the gospel in the 21st century. The only difference is that Jesus in the first century walked the earth. Jesus in the, in the 21st century lives in you. So you have the answer and you're not even knowing it. You got the answer and you're not even walking in it. You have the answer and you're not even applying it because the Jesus, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Stop stressing about a dominant coach. Stop stressing about what they said they gonna do to you. How they gonna do it. Pull out your sword and cut their head off. Huh? He's, he's giving you all of these tools, all of these parables, all of these principles, all of these keys to take the dominant culture down. And instead of you taking the dominant culture down, you are becoming far more afraid of the dominant culture than what they were in the first century. And in the first century, they were cutting them in half. They were feeding them to the lions. They had to look, they were lighting, lighting them as torches, as torches in there. If somebody said, okay, okay, Mr. So-and-so, accept Jesus. And if you don't, if you don't, if you deny Jesus, we won't cut you in half. But if you accept him, if you keep on saying he's Lord, then we're going to cut you in half and feed you to the line. Okay. Jesus ain't my Lord. That's what you do every time you allow the dominant culture of this world to tell you who you are, where you are going, how much money you're gonna make, how you're gonna get there, and to put you against the wall and say you are lesser and we are much. Does that mean, I need you to get this. I need you, cause see you just think this is a, you just think that it's just a gospel. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but that. You think Jesus just came to wash away your sins? 
Come on, nothing but the blood of Jesus. And so you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior. You, 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 you stop doing what everybody notice you doing. <laughs> Hello? And you continue doing what you can do under the cover. All right? And while you're continuing to do what you can do under the cover with, in, with no one noticing you, you are actually submitting yourself and surrendering yourself to the dominant culture that have labeled you in the world. And if you are labeled by the culture that you were born into and you never fight against that label, you will die with that label. Dominant cultures. So when Jesus came, can you imagine when Jesus came, how the Jews felt? They were second class citizens environmentally, physically, educationally, financially, culturally, socially. And Jesus stands up and say, hear ye the gospel and trample the dominant culture around you with the word of God. Did you hear what I said? So when they hear the gospel and what this gospel can do for them and through them, they say, give me this gospel. I submit to you that if you, the believer, would honestly say, give me this gospel, obey the word of God, apply the word of God in every aspect of your life, the dominant culture that's ruling over you, the dominant race, the dominance of finances, the dominance of education and environmental uh, status will become a joke to you. Become a joke to you. Because you would understand that great is he that's in you than he that is in the world. It wouldn't matter what political party is, is, is in power. It wouldn't matter what president you had. It wouldn't matter the stats that they give you on the television about your race or what you are doing and what you cannot do because you understand that you are now in the earth realm, the dominant ruling force. You're not walking in the earth realm the way you should be walking in the earth. Realm. When Jesus gave them that message, they perked up. They said, what does this mean? That means we're greater than the Romans. Now, Jesus said, no, you ain't greater than the Romans. But if you use the word of God, you will take the dominance from under them and you will not be subject to them in every aspect of your life. And you will not be less. You will be more. But in order for you to be more and not less, you have got to obey, apply the word of God. That's what the church doesn't do. We sing, we dance. We pay tithes. We got all kinds of auxiliaries. We make all kinds of plans. But when it comes down to simple obedience of the word of God, we don't want to do it. You remember Jason in Acts 17, 6? The Jews had, these are the, this, remember, the, the Roman Empire was the ruling culture. But then you had the church, which was the Jewish synagogue. All right. They, they in, in sales, they came against Jesus, too. All right. Because, see, whenever you have a dominant culture, you always have a culture under the dominant culture that wants to take dominance. Oh, did you get that? Hello. And so the Jewish people heard the word of God. And they're hearing Jason and the disciples preach the word of God. And they're watching community after community and neighborhood after neighborhood changing. And they're watching the financial level go up, the educational level go up, the societal level go up, the healing go up. And they say, wait a minute. We got to stop this gospel. They rush into Jason's house and they're going to take him and throw him in jail. He said, these guys here have turned the world upside down. When I came in the door, I heard Brian saying, you ain't, you ain't seen nothing yet. Is that what you said? Now, I didn't know what he was talking about, but I was thinking, he don't know what he's talking about because y'all really ain't seen nothing yet. Because once you move into that building, 
Hear me. Your job, your assignment is to walk as the dominant culture and to change everything in that particular community. Your job is to tell them you are the dominant culture. Their job is to tell others they are the dominant culture. Their job is to tell the others they are the dominant culture until the real dominant culture stands up. Hmm. Church. Child, I'm saved and sanctified. You got a quarter. I'm saved and sanctified. Been sick for days. I'm saved and sanctified. Still addicted. Still wrestling for 20 years. Can you imagine? You got dominance over everything. Greatest he that's in you, the heat that's in the world. And you still wrestling with the way you do the things you do. You're still wrestling with yourself. You don't even have enough dominance over yourself. Hear me, to take the enemy's hands off of you, less long you take the enemy's hands off of somebody else. Does that make sense? See, the dominant culture in the Roman Empire, they did what they were told to do. They believed the gospel. They stood on the gospel. They applied the gospel. They obeyed the gospel. And the gospel worked for them. What is the gospel? The word of God. If that ain't Jesus, tell them to call back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Clap your hands for the Holy Ghost. This is the message of the 21st century church. People that feel less than, second class citizens, the have and the have nots, the poor people, the downtrodden, those that are living, my God, in bad environments, the hood, so to speak. This is the gospel that Jesus preached to the first century church, which is doing the same thing as the 21st century church. Come on to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The gospel will take you to another level. Did you hear what I said? I know what the gospel will do because I walked in it. So I'm not preaching to you what somebody told me. I'm preaching to you what I walked in. So I know that the, that the gospel will change you. I know that the gospel will rearrange you. I know that if you got the word of God in you, you can walk in the office and have less money than anybody in the meeting and walk out with their money. Hello, somebody. Did you hear what I said? That's the gospel. See, you're so busy depending on your gift and your talent and your ability and your capability and your resource. That's why you're losing. That's why you're losing. Because you depended on you to deliver you. Didn't somebody tell you you was a second class citizen? Hello? Don't you know you are under a dominant culture, a dominant race, a dominant environment, a dominant educational system, a dominant political system? How dare you think that just you can deliver you from what you are born in? You got to have something higher than that, something more powerful than that. Great is he that's in you than he that is in the world. The kingdom of God is the dominant culture over the whole world. More powerful than any political party, any educational party, any financial system, more powerful, any race, any creed, any culture, because it is the kingdom of God that leads and directs the entire world. Listen. Our Father who art in heaven, how will be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How do you think that the will of God is going to be done on earth if you don't act like who you are? Hello? How do you think that you are going to have what you are supposed to have, bring them to the front, please. And you don't act like who you are. You act like the culture that you were born in, but you expect the culture that you were born again in to bless you and grace you and, and benefit you. It is an impossibility. Tell your neighbor, 
begin to act like who you are. Stop walking and responding to the labels that the dominant culture has placed on you. Did you hear what I said? Does, does that make sense? See, can I say something to you? The dominant culture will give you a label. Okay. Let me explain labels. Labels in our world are, are important and they're very needed because a label tells people what they're getting. You buy a can of corn and it says this is corn. It tells you what type of corn. It tells you basically the ingredients of the corn, the, the ingredients that took the corn to preserve the corn, the nutrients in the corn, because the, the label tells you all of it. The dominant culture has labeled you. I, I need you to understand this. This might be a long sermon, but bear with me. I might try to finish it. Put down label. Hmm? And you are labeled for a purpose. Let me tell you what a label is. A man goes to jail, he's considered a criminal. That's his label. He's a felon. That's his label. Okay, now he comes out of jail, he's an upright standing citizen, all right, and he has to get that label expunged from his record. All right, he's no longer a criminal, he's no longer a felon, but the world, the dominant culture has labeled him as a criminal and as a felon, and he has not committed a crime since he left jail, but he's still a felon! For the rest of his life, he's a felon! He has to get it expunged, and if he doesn't get it expunged, he lives like a felon. Am I right? He can't buy this. He can't go here. He can't, he, can't, he can't apply for this job or that job. Your dominant culture labels you. Tells the whole world who you are. You better wake up, folk. They label you. This is a black man. Label you by your zip code. Label you by your social security. Label you by your license plates. Label you by the schools you go to. They will even label you by the party that you vote for. Because the dominant culture understands that if I label them, it's for my benefit to label them because I can stop the rest of them from doing business with them. That's why you redline. Hello? That's why the banks don't give you money. Hello, did you hear what I said? That's why you're, you're stuck in the inner city because it takes so much and so much, uh, so much drive and so much hard work for you to get up and out because you've been labeled. You go to the corporations to get a job. They don't have to know you black. They look up your zip code. Hello, before you even come through the door. They looking up your zip code. Oh, 60622. Uh-oh. Hello? If they don't label you by your zip code, they label you by your name. Shaquito Smith. We're going to tear that application up. Tawan Johnson. We're going to tear. See, you're labeled. The FDC. In 1913, we were the first country to begin to label the food. Okay? The United States of America began to label food in 1913. And let, let me say this, when they began to label the food, the reason why they began to label the food was simple. They wanted everybody to know one thing or another. They wanted everybody to know what's in the food, the nutrition value of the food. Uh, how close does this food that you eat is getting you close to chronic illness? How many vitamins are in the food? So, so the FDC, that's, they, they, they're, they're saying we want you to label the food because we want, uh, uh, we want our consumers to know and be, be able to know what they're getting so they can make good choices. Am I right? That's why you labeled. You were born with labels. Because the dominant culture wants everybody to know what they are getting when they get you. What they are getting when you come to buy a house. What they are getting when you come to buy a car. So they can jack up the prices and jack up the interest rate. Hello, somebody? They're not concerned about who you really are. Because see, labeling you 
profits them. Does that make sense? And have you ever noticed the dominant culture will label you? Look, when I was a kid, I never seen a black person on, on television. But Amos and Andy. <laughs> Couldn't stand that show. Hello? We didn't have black commercials. Can I talk to y'all today? We didn't see black people on TV doing a commercial. We, we, you know, uh, we didn't see no black lady putting a tide in the washing machine. Talking about better use tide. And she's smiling. We didn't see that. You go to the magazine store, you go to the grocery store, you didn't see Essen magazine and all these people that were black on the magazine because the dominant culture says one thing. We don't want you to see them. Because we know who they are and we know what they can do. And we know how smart they are and how intelligent they are and how gifted they are. And every time we open a door for them, my God, they run through the door and slam it and we can't even get in no more. Did you hear what I said? So I want you to understand, and I'm not racist, because I really feel, and I'm going to just tell let me tell you to the camera, I feel like this. We don't have to go through and march and do all of this. All you got to do is use your God. Use your God. So labels, somebody say labels. So, so have you ever noticed that the body of Christ, we don't mind, okay, labels. We, we love labels. When we accept Jesus Christ as our person, say we want you to call us saved and sanctified and that with a burning fire. Yes, we do. Because we love labels. We walk under the label of the kingdom of God, but we do not display the authenticity of the label of the kingdom of God. We got a label on our chest that say we're saved and we're sanctified and we're born into the kingdom and we are God's children, but that's the only label we got. Because when they go past the save or salvation label, they see poverty and illness and dysfunction and addiction and lust and passion and desire. Hello? Because whether you know it or not or like it or not, you're wearing two labels. You're wearing the label that the, the, the dominant culture placed on you, okay? The dominant race placed on you, the dominant gender placed on you, and you're trying to wear the label that God placed on you. Hello, great is he that's in you that he that's in the world. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. You got two labels. So what are they getting? Are they getting the label of the dominant culture? Or are they getting the label of the kingdom? I submit to you that they can't get both and that you're either one or the other. Either you're walking in the dominance of the kingdom or you're walking under the dominance of the what? The dominant culture. Did you hear what I said? You need to begin to examine your faith in God and say, what am I walking in? And what am I walking under? And why is my life such a struggle? And why do I have to do the same thing over and over and over again? How come I cannot change? Because you have not bothered to take dominion and authority of, of, of the label that you are under. When people meet me and say, I remember when you don't remember nothing, honey, because I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. Am I right? And you always got people, I remember when. I remember then. I remember how. And if you fall to that, you're falling. And some of y'all think that's cute. Yeah, baby, I'm still the same. You're 30 years older. I was in the, in, in, I was met with a friend, and I seen him in, in the store. I don't want to mention the store. And she said, Blossom, and she may be five years younger than me. I went to my family reunion, my, my college reunion, uh, college whatever, school reunion. She said, child, I was getting down. She said, yeah, and I was asking everybody. Now, she got a little money. What kind of pension you got? You got that one of them high pensions? And then she told me something. And she's not, she's not particularly saved. She said, I put on a toothpiece. And another lady came up, and I know her too. 
She said, child, I was, she just, I can't say the word. She said, I was the stuff, you know, substitute that. <laughs> With the two-piece on. Now, I ain't saying nothing about nobody's body. <laughs> I ain't trying to say, because I'm in pretty good shape myself, but I ain't in that good piece of shape. Did you hear what I said? And I had to ask her, you put a what on? Child, I put a two-piece on. I said, what would your son had to say about that? He would have said, mama, put some clothes on. He might have thrown up. Oh. She's still living, hear me real good, under the label of 20s and 30s. She didn't get the memo. Hello? You're 69 now. Those are not dimples, baby. Those are wrinkles. Clap your hands for the Holy Ghost. Somebody say labels. You got what I'm saying, didn't you? Yeah, okay, let's go back to labels. All right, listen, listen to what I'm saying. Uh, a label is to tell you what is in the product, what is in the package. But labels are changed daily. The FDA, the FDA changes the labels on your food according to the knowledge that they get about the food. All right, am I right, Vanessa? They change it, they change it daily, they change it weekly. So when they find something that's wrong in the food, they change the label and say, you gotta correct this. This we cannot allow you to be allow this product to be marketable because this is in the food and this is harmful to the consumer. So labels are changed daily. FDC, FDAC has certain requirements, nutritional value vitamin value, how close it is to chronic illness. They have all kinds of things. And the reason why, because they want you to know what you are getting. They want you to know how safe it is. They want you to know the nutritional value. They want the consumer to know what they are getting so they can make good choices. Good choices. The reason why you couldn't make a good choice when the dominant culture labeled you because you were born under a dominant culture. You were born under a dominant race, a dominant, a dominant gender, a dominant educational system, a dominant a financial system. So, so you could not make a choice because you were born into, does that make sense? Born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Doesn't matter if you were born in America or England or Iraq or, or Ireland, every country has a dominant culture, a dominant race because dominance is the name of the game in the world. So, I'm born in this culture. I'm not making it in this culture. I'm poor in this culture. I'm sick in this culture. I'm uneducated in this culture. I'm down and out in this culture. My zip code keeps me out of the loop in this culture. So I decide to go and accept Jesus Christ as my personal savior. Translation, I decide to change cultures. I decide to change who I am under and now I'm, I'm leaving the dominant culture and I'm walking over into the dominant culture of the kingdom of God. Now the dominant culture of the kingdom of God has way more labels than the cultural dominance. You get over into the dominant culture of the kingdom of God. I need you to hear this. You left this culture the culture you were born in. You're broke, you're poor, you're sick, you live in the wrong zip code, you can't get an education, you're struggling from day to day, your grandmama struggled, your mama struggled, and now you're struggling, and if you don't change your culture, your kids gonna struggle, so you decide that you're gonna go to the next culture. You go to the kingdom of God, which is the dominance of the dominant culture. And you still broke, sick, addicted, you're still struggling. What's with that? Let me tell you what it is. You're not using 
the keys and the principles and the tools and the word of God that the dominant, dominant culture has given you to put you over the dominant culture that you are under. Great is he that's in you. Did you understand the word greater? Great is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Great is he that's in you than the dominant culture that's over you, that have labeled you, that says you can't, you have not, you're less than, you're second class. This is the message of Jesus to the first century. And might I say to you today that this is the message to the 21st century church. I submit to you this afternoon that if you would obey the word of God, apply the word of God, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of its righteousness and all of the other things you need will be added. I submit to you that God will take you from under the dominant culture, put you over the dominant culture, you will rule and reign in the earth realm. I can tell you, read your word. Things are happening from the first century to the 21st century that shouldn't be happening. For example, the Jews were, were spit upon in Germany. They killed millions of Jews. They're the financiers of the world. It's just that simple. I know you don't want to admit it. You don't want to agree to it, but it is just that. Hello? When the NBA was not like you, now the NBA is the dominant like you. Did you hear what I said? Does that make sense? When it just used to be music and sports for our culture, now from A to Z, every aspect of society you are in, whether it's science, whether it's marketing, whether it's technology, it's not, a, it's not an aspect of society that you are not in. And a lot of them got in without God. So they got in without God. How can you get in? You got God. Great is he that's in you than he that is in the world. You got to use who you are. Stop coming to church just to be coming. Child, I got to go to church. I got to pay my... No, 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 no. No, no, no. I'm coming here so I can free myself from the dominant culture and race that have put me under them because my Bible says great is he that's in me than he that is in the world. I am coming here so I can become what God wants me to come. I am coming here so I can have what God wants me to come have. I am coming here to rid me of lust and passion and desires and appetites and every addiction because I know that's my right as being a king's kid. I used to, years ago, I hated the term king, king's kids, all right, because I didn't think I was a king's kid. I just thought saved, I do what I got to do, and I avoid hell. Because see, most of you are trying to avoid hell. If you don't get that right, you ain't going to avoid hell. Hello? He didn't call you to be his son, his daughter, so you can just avoid hell and he can wash away your sins. He, he saved you and delivered you so that you can become the dominant culture in the earth realm. Our Father who art in heaven, how will be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You got to begin to see yourself as the dominant culture. The dominant culture that has labeled you, listen to this and write it down. Tells the world who you are, what you are, what you can do, what you cannot do. It not only labels you, it tells where you live. By zip code, by social security. Hear me! The label that God gives you 
frees you from any label that you were born with. And, and you know, y'all could look at me crazy. Everybody was born in a dominant culture, under the dominant culture. We was burying uh, uh, Vanessa's stepdaughter. This is your stepdaughter, right? And all the people coming in, they were talking about they came from what, what project, what, what, what was it? Inglewood Terrace. Hey, Cal, am I right? You went to, Ingle how long was you in Ingle? They labeled. And sometimes you, your label, you love your label. Even though it's your label that keeps you down and out. Am I right? You love where you come from. I'm not saying despise where you come from. I'm not saying forget where you come from. But if you got a new label, then you should use your new label to introduce yourself. I'm not walking up to a multi-millionaire. My name is Pamela Blossom. I come from Henry Horner Projects. <laughs> he may find out that later on. And I may tell him that in the conversation. But the label that's on me is the kingdom of God. Did you hear what I said? You got to be able to change your labels. Stop being so happy about the label that you have. I was waiting for some, some, some stuff at a store. And we see this guy. I don't know why these old people be trying to act young. I don't even know that. The guy come in, he's about 66 years old, maybe 70. <laughs> Hat was on backwards. He just a talking. And I'm thinking, I was telling Brother Blossom about it. I said, this is too much. In one day, I see a woman, old lady, and I see a man trying to be Keeping the label, because see, the, the dominant culture tells you that you ain't, you, this, you, you're going to be this forever. That's the lie that the dominant culture tells you. Have you ever noticed the dominant culture tells you, it's your thing, do what you want to do. I can't tell you who to sock it to. <laughs> Honey, after a certain age, hello? Who you are is supposed to change with your age. Did you hear what I said? And we normally point our fingers at women because the dominant culture and the dominant race is the dominant gender, which is male. Hear me. And the dominant gender says, well, I'm male and I can be old and be silly and nobody notices. Excuse me. Hello? Did you hear me? I can be 80, 70, 60, and act like I'm 12. But that's the dominant race. Let an 80 year old woman tell me, how you doing? You wanna come home with me? They throwing up and running. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, can, let me finish. Because the dominant gender labels whatever's going on. Am I right? And so they have given permission to the dominant gender, which is male, to act crazy. Now we're living where it's a flip-flop now. And everybody's talking about it. Because now women are acting like the dominant male. Am I right? Uh, uh, get your shoes and your socks. No, you can't leave your toothbrush here. Just get to going. See ya. For, I, I, for those of you who didn't understand what I said, meet me at the church. I'll tell you. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? See, you're not just listening. I'm not just talking about a dominant culture. I'm talking about a dominant race and a dominant gender. Okay? There's no dominant culture. There's no dominant race. We're watching in God's There's club no with PM gender. Blossom. In the kingdom of Services God. every Sunday, 1245 p.m. at World Outreach Conference Center, 4 East 111th Street, Chicago, Illinois 60628.
For prayer request please call 833-963-0253 that's 833-963-0253. Leave your name and your need and we will pray for you. Let's have a conversation together about today's message you can do so at www.yourspaceyourface.org.